The situation that you often encounter when you're fishing spring creeks and tailwaters is when there's a lot of mayflies on the surface, but the trout don't seem to be taking the duns. And in most cases, they're feeding on emergers or, or what we call cripples. And I want to tie a cripple here for you, which essentially just all a cripple means is a mayfly that during the emerging process got stuck or, or in the nymphal shuck or just didn't make it. And they, they get part way out and then they just stay that way and they just drift down on the surface and the trout really quickly pick up on how vulnerable these crippled mayflies are and, and they sometimes will feed exclusively on them. And the idea in tying our fly is that we're going to put the imitation of the nymphal shuck on the back and then the front part of the fly is going to imitate the wing that is has pulled out of the nymphal shuck but hasn't made it all the way out. It's a mayfly stuck in the nymphal shuck. We're going to start out then. We're going to put a little bit of wire We're going to put a little bit of pheasant tail. We're going to start out then in putting the shuck on and, and a simple way to do that is to add some marabou and the marabou that I'm going to use is colored to imitate the color of the nymph, not the dun. And in, in this case, I'm going to use kind of a rusty colored marabou. Another thing that I think is important in tying a, a uh, fly like this is we want the nymphal shuck to be under the surface. We want it to break the surface. So I'm going to use very water absorbent materials like marabou that also gives a little bit of a life to it. Tied the marabou in by the tip to leave a bit, little bit for the tail. And I'm also going to tie some of this wire and I'm going to use a, a dubbing loop on this which is going to double the wire around the marabou. Now you don't have to do this. You, if you wanted to take the step of just wrapping the marabou and then ribbing the wire, you can certainly do that as well. I'm making a little loop in this wire that is just a little bit shorter than the marabou is long. And I'm going to put just a little bit of wax up here on the end of this because sometimes the marabou tends to want to slide out when I spin this in my little, with my little dubbing twister. Okay, I'm going to hold the loop open, go inside the loop over the marabou and catch the back side of the loop with the other end of this and then pull this tight. And then we're going to twist this. What we're doing is just twisting the marabou around the wire. And then we'll wrap it halfway up the shank of the hook to form the nymphal shuck. I can see a little bit of that wire showing through and that's good. I think that gives a little bit more of a lifelike appearance to the fly. But the other thing that it does for us is that it will add just about enough weight on the back of this hook to break the surface film and that's really important. So there's the nymphal shuck far back. I, I only want a little bit of it so I'm just going to break the rest of it off. Breaking it off looks a lot more natural than 
cutting it where I have a real steep angle there to, to cut. We've got the back part of the fly tied now, the nymph will shut. So the next thing we're going to do is put a little bit of dubbing to imitate the color of the mayfly done as it's emerging from the nymphal case. We'll just put a little bit of uh, this super fine dubbing. We we'll use a pale yellow. You could also use olive, tan, or, or uh, a light gray to imitate other kinds of mayflies. And then the last thing we're going to do is put the wing. Make sure to allow plenty of room at the head for the wing because we're going to use some deer hair and tie some hackle here. So we cut a little bit of, of gray deer hair. You don't need to use a lot. It, one of the most common mistakes is to overdress these mayfly cripples because there's a lot of material to put on and you got to stay fairly sparse with how much you use. We've got a little bit of deer hair here now and I'm just going to stack this to get the tips even. And you don't need to have a very long wing here. The wing should be less than the length of the body, about two-thirds of the length of the body. Hold it in place and make a couple of wraps over the top. And just kind of flare this out a little bit. Make some tight wraps. What we got to do here is, is we cut the hair back just a little bit to kind of give the appearance of a, of a wing case that's kind of just emerging. The last thing we do is we do put a hackle. We only put a couple of turns of hackle. And we're going to go right around the wing. Take one hackle. Cut the portion of it off that's got webbing on it. And then tie it in tightly. We got the hackle tied in now just behind the wing. We'll take our hackle pliers now and just make two wraps of hackle around the wing. And then tie it off. And, wh and what the appearance this gives us is that the, the wing will stick above the surface of the water and the rest of the fly will hang just below the surface. And one reason that these kinds of flies are so effective is because when I see trout feeding on very smooth surfaces like we often find on a spring creek, they hold very close to the surface as they feed. And the trout's window, his window of vision actually is a cone that extends 97 degrees out from his eyes. So the closer he is to the surface, the smaller his window is. Everything above the surface uh, can only be seen through his window. Everything else is just a reflection of the bottom. And when a trout is holding so close to the surface, his window is so small that he really doesn't see things that are actually on the surface. He's picking out things that are suspended in the surface film. And that's why when you have a fly like this, you want it to be drifting with the shot down under the surface so the trout can really key on it. And that's what makes the cripple so effective.